What is going on, wonderful people? It's Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Welcome back to my biochemistry playlist. In previous videos, we started talking about glycogen storage diseases. We talked about glycogen storage diseases type 1, which is von Gerke disease. We talked about type 2, which is Pompey's disease. Type 3 is Corey's disease. Type 4 is Anderson disease. Today, we'll talk about glycogen storage disease type 5 which is McCardle disease. McCardle with an M trashes your muscle with an M. Click the like button, click the subscribe button, and let's get started. Before you watch this video, please refer to another video called Glycogen Metabolism in my Biochemistry for MCAT playlist. What are these glycogen storage diseases? Glycogen storage disease type 1 is Von Gerke. Type 2 is Pompey's disease. Type 3 is Corey. Type 4 is Anderson. Type 5 is McCardle. And type 6 is Ehr's disease. If the genie came to me and said to me, Hey, Medicosis, you have been cursed by a glycogen storage disease. Which one would you choose? Well, I hate all of them. If I have to choose, I'll go with Cori or glycogen storage disease type 3. Why is that? Because it's a mild disease. For sure, I will not choose type 4 or Anderson. That's evil. This can lead to death early in childhood. So these are the most important glycogen storage diseases, but these are not all of them. In fact, there are about 15 or so, maybe more today, glycogen storage diseases. These are the ones that we'll discuss. All of them are autosomal recessive, although be careful because some of them can have more than one pattern of inheritance. On my channel, in my biochemistry playlist, there is a separate video for each one of these diseases. These disease symptoms usually manifest themselves in infancy or early childhood. There is no predilection towards females or males. Now let's memorize one or two things about each disease. Von Gerke's disease is the most common, although some textbooks will claim that type 6 is now the most common. Von Gerke is the one that affects the liver, it has high uric acid which increases the risk of gout, and it can have anemia. Next, type 2 is Pompey's disease. Pompey, remember the pump, the heart, cardiomyopathy, arrhythmias, etc. Type 3 is Cori, a very mild disease. That's why I drew a smaller liver relative to von Gerke. Symptoms are similar, but von Gerke is way more severe than Cori disease. Type 4 is Anderson, pure evil, cirrhosis, ascites, splenomegaly, and it can lead to early death. Type 5 is McCardell. McCardell, remember skeletal muscles, which will lead to generalized muscle weakness all over the body. Type 6 symptoms are similar to type 1. Now let's talk about glycogen. Glycogen is what? It's a big sugar. The big sugar stored in animals is glycogen. In plants, starch. Now let's take it up a notch. Here is glycogen built up. It's the land of insulin. But glycogen catabolism is the land of glucose. Glucagon. Name the process glycogen synthesis or glycogenesis. Name the process glycogenolysis. Name the key rate limiting enzyme glycogen synthase versus glycogen phosphorylase. That's the most important enzyme here and the most important enzyme here. What's the second most important enzyme? If you're trying to build up, it's the branching enzyme. It adds branches. But how about the glycogen breakdown? It's a debranching enzyme. We're trying to break down, so you remove a branch. When you remove a branch or when you break down a bond in the presence of water, it's hydrolysis, so debranching enzyme has a hydrolase activity. So it's the feeding state versus the fasting state, the land of insulin versus the land of glucagon, the land of abundance versus the land of scarcity, anabolism stan versus catabolism stan. So glucose up to glycogen, this is anabolism, insulin stain. Insulin is helping the glycogen synthase. How? By dephosphorylating it. How about the fasting state? Glucagon is helping glycogen phosphorylase. How? By phosphorylating it. Now, let's imagine that I have a glycogen storage disease. I cannot utilize glycogen. Do you think I'll be able to break it down into glucose when I need it? No. So I'll suffer big time during the fasting state because it's during the fasting state that you need to break down glycogen into glucose. What's going to happen in the fasting state if I cannot break down glycogen to glucose? You will have low blood sugar, fasting hypoglycemia, and 
you will have tons of glycogen that you could not break down. Glycogen accumulation in organs such as the liver, hepatomegaly, the heart, cardiomyopathy, the muscle, myopathy. My liver can suffer from enlargement or even cirrhosis. My heart can suffer arrhythmia and weak pumping. And my muscles will be weak and I will be exercise intolerant. All of these are symptoms of glycogen storage diseases because medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. So insulin helps glycogen synthase by dephosphorylating it, i.e. removing a phosphate. Glucagon is helping glycogen phosphorylase by adding a phosphate, phosphorylation. There is another enzyme that takes that phosphate and literally adds it to the glycogen phosphorylase to activate it. And this is known as glycogen phosphorylase kinase, which adds a phosphate to glycogen phosphorylase. Ergo, glycogen phosphorylase kinase. A kinase is an enzyme that adds a phosphate. Notice that glucagon, the land of starvation, adds a phosphate. So if I see tons of phosphate in your cell, it means that you are starving. Accumulation of cellular phosphate is a starvation signal, signifying prolonged fasting. If you wish to download these doozy colorful notes, go to medicosisperfectionatis.com. I help you learn, understand, and pass exams. If you want me to personally tutor you, reach out to me on my website. Let's build up glycogen. You need glycogen synthase. That's the main enzyme. What's the second most important? Branching enzyme. Let's do the opposite. Glycogen to glucose. All right, I will need glycogen phosphorylase. That's the key rate limiting enzyme. I'll need a debranching enzyme, and the last step is to convert glucose 6-phosphate into glucose. How do you do that? Just remove a phosphate. How do you remove a phosphate? Phosphatase. I'm removing a phosphatase from carbon number 6 of glucose, so it's glucose 6-phosphatase. What are the names of the organs that have glycogen in them? Liver, that's the most important one, and the muscle. But there is a huge difference between the two. You see this last enzyme? It's only present in the liver, not in the muscle, which means the only organ that can give you free glucose without phosphate is the liver. The muscle can never do it. And that's why when the liver breaks down its own glycogen, it can give you pure glucose for your blood, which will go to every other organ heart, brain, muscles, kidneys, you name it. But when the muscle breaks down its own glycogen, it will go all the way until glucose 6-phosphate and stop because the muscle lacks the enzyme, glucose 6-phosphatase, necessary to convert glucose 6-phosphate into glucose, which means glucose 6-phosphate will end up being trapped in the muscle because phosphorylation fixes stuff. This glucose 6-phosphate is fixed in the muscle. It can never leave, which means the muscle glycogen can never serve as a source of glucose for your blood. Put differently, the liver is altruistic, but the muscle is egotistic. The liver's glycogen will give glucose to every organ, but the muscle's glycogen gives energy only for the muscle greedy. And that's why in type 1 glycogen storage disease, von Gerke's, the patient suffers from what? Fasting hypoglycemia. Because now the liver lacks this enzyme and cannot provide us with glucose for the blood. So during fasting, the patient suffers from low glucose in the blood. Contrast that with type 5 glycogen storage disease, myocardial disease, where the problem is in the muscle glycogen phosphorylase. Do you think this muscle will be able to break down its glycogen to glucose 6-phosphate? No. So the muscles will be weak. But will my serum glucose be affected? No, because the muscle never gave us glucose. Glucose. So if the muscle is screwed up, tough on the muscle, but not on the rest of the body. If the muscle is suffering, but the liver is healthy, the liver will give me glucose for the blood and I will not suffer from fasting hypoglycemia. Medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. In the feeding state, insulin approves this message, let's make glycogen glucose into glucose 6-phosphate. How do I do this? Hexokinase or glucokinase. And then glucose 6-phosphate into glucose 1-phosphate. Oh, so the phosphate uh, jumped from 6 
to carbon number one? Exactly. What's the name of this mutating enzyme? Phosphoglucomutase. Then glucose 1-phosphate through many steps will give us glycogen. Thank you, glycogen synthase. Thank you, branching enzyme. Now we have glycogen, okay? However, in the fasting state, epinephrine and glucagon approve this message, glycogen phosphorylase, D branching enzyme. Glycogen becomes glucose 1-phosphate, and then by the same mutase, glucose 6-phosphate. By the key enzyme glucose 6-phosphatase, part of gluconeogenesis and glycogenolysis, you convert glucose 6-phosphate into glucose by removing a phosphate group. The key concept in many of these glycogen storage diseases is that I either cannot make glycogen or more commonly cannot break down glycogen into glucose. And of course, if I cannot make glycogen, I will not be able to utilize glycogen later. No input, no output. The end result is whenever I fast, I cannot break down glycogen to glucose, so I get fasting hypoglycemia. All of that glycogen will accumulate in my liver, hepatomegaly, or in my muscle, muscle problems, or in the heart, cardiomyopathy. What's the normal? The liver stores glycogen for the blood. What's the abnormal in these glycogen storage diseases? Fasting hypoglycemia. What's the normal? The skeletal muscle stores glycogen, and this glycogen is only for the muscle. The muscle is egotistic. So therefore, glycogen storage diseases that affect the muscle will lead to muscle weakness because the muscle cannot utilize glycogen as a source of energy for itself. But the diseases that affect the muscles only, like myocardial disease, usually do not have fasting hypoglycemia. Next, red blood cells do not store glycogen. That's why in these glycogen storage diseases, you will never hear of hemolytic anemia. But hemolytosis von Gerke's disease might have anemia. Yeah, anemia. We do not know its cause, but it's not hemolytic anemia. Even if it is hemolytic anemia, every rule has exception. So these are the six glycogen storage diseases. Von Gerke's disease is missing glucose 6-phosphatase, and we call this type 1. How about type 2? Pompey's disease. Think of Pompey, pump. The problem is in the hearts lysosomal acid alpha glucosidase you can also call it alpha 1 and 4 glucosidase some books will even call it just debranching enzyme which is fair enough type 3 which is cori is a problem in the debranching enzyme type 4 is anderson is a problem in the branching enzyme no input no output you know who's trapped in the liver glucose 1 phosphate if you're phosphorylated you're trapped these liver cells will be toast and the patient can develop cirrhosis anderson is evil mccardle disease is a problem in the glycogen phosphorylase only of the muscle so i get what muscle weakness how about type 6 which is urge disease same glycogen phosphorylase but the one that's in the liver so you get hepatomegaly and fasting hypoglycemia. Complications of all of these glycogen storage diseases include liver failure and cirrhosis, yeah, arrhythmia and cardiomyopathy, yeah, as well as muscle weakness and muscle destruction. How can we diagnose? You can look for the abnormal gene on its corresponding chromosome and you can measure the level of the enzyme. It will be lacking. For example, von Gerke's disease will have very low levels of glucose 6-phosphatase. And since, in almost all of them, glycogen keeps piling up and accumulating, you can test for this by the periodic acid shift, immunohistochemical technique. PAS loves sugar. And if you have too much of it, you will be PAS positive. Management. Well, since fasting hypoglycemia is a common concern, keep the patient on a diet that provides regular glucose supplement. Do not let the patient fast for a long time. If you can give the patient the enzyme that is missing, that's amazing. When the liver is toast, it's time for liver transplant. When the heart is toast, it's time for heart transplant. Before the heart is toast, if it's just arrhythmia, you can add a pacemaker. Glycogen storage disease type 5, myocardial disease. Myocardial, think of muscle. Myocardial, the defect is in the PYGM gene, chromosome 11Q. Look at the 11. It looks like the two legs of this M. Here and here, like an 11. Q, because it's myocardial disease. A Q sound with the Q sound. It trashes my muscle because the deficiency is in the muscle glycogen phosphorylase, aka myophosphorylase. Contrast that with the disease that we'll talk about next, which is type 6 or Ehr's disease, 
where the problem is in the glycogen phosphorylase of the liver, not the muscle. Symptoms, muscle weakness, because the muscle cannot utilize its own glycogen for its own good. Glycogen piles up in the muscle, generalized muscle weakness, exercise intolerance. If you exercise strenuously and vigorously, you can destroy your muscles, rhabdomyolysis, rhabdo means skeletal, myo means muscle, lysis means breakdown, breakdown of skeletal muscles. When you break down your muscles, myoglobin will be released into the circulation, myoglobinemia, and end up in the kidney, myoglobinuria. It's very toxic to your kidney, and it shows up in the urine. Burgundy colored urine, just like this color right here. I love burgundy. I mean, send me a gift of a burgundy pen made in Japan and I will be the happiest man ever. Normally, is the muscle a source of glucose for the blood? No, the muscle is greedy. The muscle is egotistic. So serum glucose is normal, as long as the liver is normal. Electrolyte imbalances can happen leading to cardiac arrhythmias. Normally, if I exercise a lot vigorously, what's gonna happen? Well, you'll eventually run out of oxygen for your muscles. You will shift towards the anaerobic glycolysis producing lactic acids. So your lactic acid in the blood, especially venous blood, because the muscles dump the waste and the acids onto the venous side, not the arterial side. So I'll have elevated lactate levels in the veins as I exercise. The more I exercise, the higher my lactate level, but not in myocardial disease. Why? Because in order for me to get Lactate, I need to get pyruvate first. Where did pyruvate come from? From glucose. Oh, if all of this is not working, I will never be able to convert glucose 6-phosphate into pyruvate. No pyruvate, no lactate. So even if this patient exercises, the venous lactate curve remains flat. It does not go up like normal people. So if the muscle cannot break down its glycogen for its own energy, what will the muscle do? The muscle will break down its own proteins. Oops. That's why when this patient exercises, there is exaggerated increase in the serum ammonia, proving that the muscle could not utilize its own sugar, instead shifted to utilizing all of its protein. That's why rhabdo is common in myocardial disease. Medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. Treatment, try to replace the enzyme, avoid strenuous exercise, avoid fasting. As for the mnemonic for myocardial disease or type 5, we just talked about it. It's the M mnemonic. Pause and review. Myocardial, I'm missing the muscle glycogen phosphorylase or the myophosphorylase. I get muscle weakness, I get arrhythmias, I get rhabdomyolysis. Quiz time. Can you tell me the answers to all of these eight questions in the comment section? You will find the correct answer to each of them in the specific video that matches the topic. So to answer those on Von Gerke's, watch my video on Von Gerke's. If you like this video, you will enjoy my endocrine pharmacology course. It will teach you about the different types of insulin, calculating the dose of insulin for your patient with diabetes, the difference between type 1 and and type 2 diabetes as well as diabetic ketoacidosis. Download it today at medicosisperfectionalis.com. To learn about diabetes of pregnancy, gestational diabetes, and to learn about preeclampsia, eclampsia, acute fatty liver of pregnancy, the liver diseases that happen in pregnancy or around pregnancy, download my OBGYN high yields course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. There are more than 750 premium videos available on this channel when you click the join button and choose the highest tier. Please subscribe, hit the bell, smash like, support my channel on Patreon, PayPal, or Venmo. Go to my website to download my courses, notes, and cases, or if you would like me to personally tutor you. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine, chemistry, math, and physics make perfect sense.